Welcome back to episode 29 of the Solar Crusader series for Legends, PTR, and Stronghold mod. Today is sort of the semi-final of the series. I have a few things planned, and a few things planned for next episode to finish us off. Uh, but before we get into it all, I want to say a big thank you to the 1,600 subscribers for the channel. We reached another milestone, and I'm just stoked that you guys are constantly enjoying the content. And, like, the streams are going well as well. Thank you guys for coming along to the weekend streams and enjoying the content that we have there as well. Uh, I'll keep going, and please be super hyped for Season 9 as we continue to keep going with Battle Brothers and maybe a little bit more in the future. But thank you again for all the support. And, yeah, let's get into today's episode. We are planning to do a few things, but... We are on the latest version of Stronghold mod. There have been some nice little updates and tweaks since we've been playing with it this series. And I'm very thankful for the mod creator of Stronghold for constantly doing little fixes and updates to fix basically the problems that we've been seeing throughout the playthrough. Uh, let's go back to the main base. And one thing I need to show you guys is the location thing has been fixed. So the little bug that we had with it where it was taking our money, not building a location, Probably was a bug after we built the hamlet or something. Uh, but we are now able to... Now, if the game doesn't have the chance to build it, it'll refund the money, as far as what I've heard from the patch notes or something. Um, but basically, we spend our money, which we don't have much of anyways. Uh, the money gets taken from us, and on the map is now the Blast Furnace. So, a very nice little fix, bug fix, and I appreciate it. Uh, and it's good to be able to build things once again and drain my money to practically nothing. So on the topic of having no money, uh, let's do a quick arena to start the episode. Uh, it is Serpents. That is a easy clap, even though it's ten. You know the drill. Serpents are a pushover. At least for us. And get ourselves back up to a little bit of spare pocket change, basically. Nice. This will blow over so easily as we just bum rush the front line. Yeah, do whatever you guys want. Oh, except screw our morale. Of course our morale had to be screwed over. Well, regardless of our morale being ruined, uh, the serpents will not pose a threat. A nice double, triple kill, something like that will definitely get us into the green. A single kill is okay. I was slightly expecting a little more, but that's alright. Oh, the pull, of course, of course. The only problem with the pulls is it allows them to check our morale again. If we get lowered again, don't do it. Okay, okay, we're fine. <laughs> Cheeky snakes, I'll tell you that. Yep. Yep, anything to try and ruin us. Ooh, lucky five. Fair enough. Oh, we're pulled back. Of course, the pull strats. And of course, the I knew it. I freaking called it. I thought it was going to happen last turn. Our confident morale gets checked by a snake that has a concussion. Well, no matter. It's over. Nice. Easy money. Easy XP. And that brings us back to a safe amount of money. Not like we spend much money anyways, but you never know when you might need it. Let's put that trophy back on before I forget, because that is a bad habit of mine. Uh, let's get another knowledge potion set up. And what else is there to do? Weaponsmith I don't think has been updated. No. It's not been long enough since the last episode, including the armor smith, which just has that garbage armor piece. Uh, do we need more potions? Not really. Like, I mean, Night Owl Elixir's fun to grab, but we have a couple of stacks of everything that we already will be using for some crucial fights that are yet to be shown. Uh, but yeah, looking all right. We could grab some stuff from the storage. That would work. Stock up. 
empty out our new golden item food. Uh, a little bit of medicine, another bit of tools. And that should be us sorted. Nice. Okay. So, let's start heading towards our destination today. And the destination is a little bit more northbound. But before we go, I was kind of thinking... What can we do to clean up the streets? Just a teeny weensy bit. Uh, I... I kind of love the fact that the orcs are so close to us. And I think because of the militia barracks, and even though we're tier 1, I think our fort's going to be okay. Uh, now the other thing I wanted to show you guys before we do a little bit of cleanup of some goblins, I think is our only option, uh, is... No, it's not on this one. Just keep teleporting. Uh, this one, yeah. We can build a road between our settlements for... 30 grand. But it would be worth it. I still think, though, getting tier 3 before the road is more important, though. It's super expensive. But that is obviously because it's probably going to join up this way or from here to Hohenschanz or to Wormberg. It's one of those three or to this middle T intersection. I don't know. Something like that, but regardless, it would be a very expensive road, as you can tell, and building even further in the wilderness. I do believe it is possible to build roads, even if you're insanely far away from civilization. It's just gonna cost you. So yeah, 30 grand for some roads, which would then start allowing patrols and caravans to wander through the very dangerous wilderness. Probably something we would rather save for later. But the option is there if we so choose. So building the networks is fun and capable for a larger empire. Um, but for the moment, let's go check out and see what's in here. I don't remember. Yeah, single shaman. Ugh. Could we deal with that? Ah, if we were going to deal with it, we would do it at night and use the correct trophy for goodness sakes. I was almost going to forget that. Uh, if they have a raiding party, I will happily take them out. No, no raiding party escaping their location. Well, then let's try it. Let's see if we can warm ourselves up on a nice big goblin fight. 23. I was expecting more. Not that I'm complaining. But when it says plethora, you just obviously assume that there's just a ton. Uh, let's put reds on so this tree can defend us. And the shaman will most likely work on... That was nice. Night vision for the early stages of the fight. Uh, if I can bum rush the shaman, that would be amazing. Ah, uh, but I forgot the wolf riders are around. It did only say a few, so it's probably like three or four. No, I think it's like two or three. Uh, because... Oh, fudge. I knew that was going to happen, but not so soon. Do I go for the attack? Holy crap, no way. Well, return favor it is, and I can even attack once with this. And get a lucky 32, I'll take it. That's gotta hurt. Getting stunned from return favor and poison from your friend immediately afterwards. Oh, we didn't get that stun. That's okay. Forty-three. Oh, we're gonna be in quite the slog fest. I'm gonna have to do return favor again and still not have any. Fatigue. Oh, I wish I could do return favor and pound at the same time. Hmm. Oh, he's shield walling before he attacks, so that ruins his shield wall. Dang, that's unfortunate. Okay, from here, maybe I have a chance. 
Yes, the good chance happened. Oh, that was a beautiful cleanup. Oh, I have an idea. I could switch weapons. Not, like, the most efficient way of doing things, but if he's going to keep screwing my melee skill just before it's my turn, which is obviously a pain. Thanks for the double five percents, buddy. I, I don't know why, but thank you. Uh, I think the strategy could be... Return favor and then attack for four fatigue, which is just enough, 16 plus four, to attack once every turn while still doing return favor. So yeah, probably that strat's going to work for the time being against shamans. It's going to be slow, but it'll work. <gasps> I can return favor the reach, guys, because I have a reach weapon. Oh, that's amazing, and I love it. Uh, I'm going to go return favor again, and then just bop someone in the face. 20, 50, 45, 37, 55. I'd say 55 is pretty good, especially if it double hits him down to 2 health. And damn, their stuns last a long time. It's wonderful. I can't do three tiles. That's my only kryptonite. I can't do a three tile return favor. But look how many stuns are on the field. I've never seen so many stuns. It feels too good. Yeah, I'll keep it going. I can't say no. There's even a situation... Oh, wow, the double dodge? Unlucky. Yeah, I'm thinking... Forty-three. It's just... Yeah, the accuracy is just not reliable. Nice, good kill. Yeah, I think the safer way is just to play this slower. If I go for the wide swing and not the return favor, then it's like, hmm. Would be really, really slow on its own with a bit more risk. So I'm just going to play it this way. The return favor stops a lot of their damage, especially with the reach weapon. So until I clear out their reach enemies and carve a path to the shaman himself or herself. Nice. I wish I got that to kill, but it missed the second hit. Or missed the first hit. Dang it. Oh, it also staggers them too. Yeah, that's the other good part. That is nice to have. Good kill, and do I go again now that they're really stunned? I'm going for the headshot. That would be disgusting. And now I don't have a return favor. Ah, it was worth the risk. They should mostly still have stun for my next turn. And now... Oh, this stupid shaman's going to do its thing. Maybe I risk the swing in a circle. Literally one speed faster than us. And it looks that way, but technically she's a lot faster. 41, 52, 43. Okay, we got some good numbers there, so that kind of worked out better than I expected. Now, the reason why that worked better is because the pattern recognition was stacking up from all of the previous turns, even though they were stunned for half of those, but the pattern recognition did make a difference. Eh, the strategy wasn't too bad. Let's see if I can push forward now. Yeah, the Overseer's gonna be annoying, but... <sighs> Getting surrounded. Let's try it. I mean, our luck's good today. Um, 
That could be a bad sign. Because we kind of need our luck for the next fight. But I won't complain about decent luck for this fight. Dodging a lot of nice arrows keeps our armor healthy. And... I've got to find a way to that shaman. <gasps> She's getting exhausted! Yes, that is the key situation we need. A tired shaman is a good shaman. That's, you know, gonna die soon. Uh, Overseer has his two buddies. Fair enough. Don't shoot me, please. Oh, he's totally gonna shoot me. Oh my goodness. That's enough arrows, please. Incoming! Oh, he misses! Thank you! Also, we're probably gonna miss. Crap. Well, we get one hit and... 68! Damn it! Oh, I needed to get next to that Overseer. I really did. Kata Step's not the worst thing in the world. Protects me from some shots. Ouch, that hurt, but didn't push me back. Probably I ran into the tree. Um, It's a 47. Come on, man. Thank you. I need to be in this spot. That shaman is probably tired this round. I really hope so. I hope that planned itself well. Armor's taking a bad hit, um, but so are the goblins. Yes! Yes, she was exhausted. That's the turn we needed. Uh, I just go for a circle, right? Nice. Perfect. Now next turn we rush the Shaman, it's GG. Unless they kill their own Overseer. Then it's even quicker, GG. Haha! -ha! Yes, you didn't anticipate me to move five squares instead of four. Ouch. I also didn't anticipate two headshots. Oh, here comes the poison. Okay, you protect me from their shots, please. Not like it makes the biggest difference. It really doesn't. Oh, boy. A stunned shaman is a good dead shaman, but... There we go, we're around three of them. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're done. Oh, of course he does the footwork. Jerk. Do I go after him? He's got a smashed hand, so I think I... I think I do go after him. Nice, and he protects us from the range. Yes, that's good. Holy crap, running out of armor. Oh, this is a bit more tooth and nail than I was expecting it to be. Luckily, the poison does not last long. Oh, no. Yes, please start running. Please start running. Ouch. They only can do quick shots. Good. Yes, and I'm behind a tree, and this guy's the one with the smashed hand. Whoo, that was a bit closer than expected. I was not expecting this fight to be that rough. But archers... Archers don't mess around at night against people that don't have range defense. Sadly, I wish they would mess around a little bit more. But seven grand in the experience part. Woo! Damn, that was a good fight. In terms of the rewards. Not so much in the execution, because ouch. Uh, hopefully that doesn't uh, deter me or forebode the next fight. As we have no injuries to fix? Good. Whew. Did not want to have to deal with an injury. Let's get some healing done. I won't go too fast in case the orcs are around. Won't put backup armor because I'm not that 
panicked on someone attacking me. Really? You're the purples, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Bunch of jerks. Well, I have a foolproof plan. You can't catch me by boat. Goblins don't have ships. That would be scary, though, wouldn't it? A goblin fleet of little baby ships that just swarm you. Ooh. Goblins on land are bad enough. Okay, we're fully healed. Ready to get moving. Um... <laughs> I, uh... I appreciate all the bug fixes, but I think that might be a slight visual bug. Uh, probably because of the changes made to fix the keep. Uh, or maybe because I bought something during the day. Uh, but I don't think the keep's meant to look like the marketplace or the storage. <laughs> Not a problematic bug, as you can see, everything else seems to work normally. Uh, I can't build a location, though, interestingly enough. Did I build the maximum number of locations and you can't remove them? Hmm, I thought you could remove them. But I might be incorrect. Uh, regardless, uh, not a bad bug, but a funny looking one indeed. Uh, how are we looking? How are we looking? Pretty healthy. Everything else looks pretty decent. We will wait till morning. Just so I can sell off. Oh, it's back to normal. Must be a nighttime bug then. Fair enough. Uh, let's clean up our inventory from what we just got. Yep, that's pretty good. Didn't sell anything by accident. Uh, actually, wait a minute. No, I just realized I can't keep the poisons. My inventory's full. If only you could keep poisons on a belt and not in your inventory. I mean, it's called bags and belts for a reason. It technically adds a belt. But I need my my weapons. Ah, the, the problem of not having enough. <laughs> we'll live with it. Okay, so, what am I forgetting? That should be everything. Uh, has the weaponsmith changed? No. And the armorsmith, I don't believe, has changed either. Alchemist is the usual, but don't think we need any more potions. We're pretty much set. Uh, let's start moving towards the fight of the day. I don't need to use that. Don't think we're going to use the Banshee Trophy. It is good to have 250 regen for the return favor into the pound. 15 plus 18 plus 8. Actually, maybe not. Maybe when we're confident we could do it. Yeah, when we're confident we can deal with that. Return favor into the flail. Um, hmm. I'm thinking Orc Trophy might be the right play, though. Yeah, in, in foresight, hopefully, it is the right play. Um, also, on top of that, let's get our potions ready. Uh, we're gonna get very sick from it, because unfortunately, um... Oh, God. The cat potion doesn't do anything! <laughs> Plus 20 initiative, and we're still at minus 11. Uh, I will also go for the Night Owl Elixir, just because... It's gonna help us in this fight super slightly. Do I go Strange Mushrooms, though? That's the big question. And I think the answer is yes. Weirdly enough, I think we go, like, insanely committed and go rage mode. The rage mushrooms are in effect. So this right here is the most buffed we can possibly get at our current power level. Uh, other than getting maybe some more levels and some more perks, which would take a while, unfortunately. But for the moment, this is peak performance, except for the fact that we're sick for one to three days. Because we just downed a bunch of druggy potions and mushrooms. So, unfortunately, we have to wait it out. That is the best way to do it. Uh, seeing as these potions last for the next battle, as stated in their description, 
Gone after two battles for enhanced learning is special. But every other fancy potion, like the stamina, which is four fatigue. Oh, wait, it's four fatigue. I don't really need the demonic. I was considering it, but the potion solved my problems. Um, one more battle, one more battle, one more battle, one more battle, and including the mushrooms, one more battle. So, since it says one more battle, you can wait until your sick is gone, because sick is, is one of the rare injuries in the game that you can't fix with the medicine tent by camping it off. You actually have to wait those injuries out. You can't treat them, you can't go to a, a temple in town... There's nothing that's going to help you get rid of them except for patience. So be very careful when you decide to chug a bunch of potions. Usually your first potion that you chug doesn't get you sick. Uh, but more than one has a very, very high chance of getting you sick. And unfortunately we rolled not the minimum number of days. So we got to keep waiting. And we might as well train while we wait because there's nothing better to do. Food's fine, everything else is fine. Past the midday point, and it's... Only a two-day sickness. Sweet. And we're back to full health. Everything's buffed. 227 base resolve because of the potion and the bonuses we have. I wonder what we'd be like confident. That would be pretty sweet. Still obviously getting body checked by basic enemies, but, you know, it's the thought that counts. Okay, let's start heading north, and now the trick is, now that we have all our potions, we are avoiding fights like the plague. Hi, Shrats, we don't want you. Avoiding fights like the plague. Are you freaking kidding me? That's a champion shrat? You gotta be freaking kidding me. Why is there a champion shrat? What a waste of potions. Oh, we'll have to re potion up next fight. This is one of the major problems with potions. It's it looks like a greenwood shrat, but it's it looks weird. How bad did that rant damage our weapon? It didn't damage it. Oh, that's big. Ouch. That didn't do HP damage, which is good to see. Um, incoming a lot of damage to them, but they've got shields. Oh, lord. Do I go hammer? I can't break their shields. The darn shrats, the best way to beat them is beating up their shields. Um, and go for them for their core. Oh, actually, wait, I can break shields. Holy crap, how many 5%s do you guys want to hit? Calm down. I have shield breaker on this one. But instead... I'll kill the basic shrats first. Yeah, I'm going to kill the basic shrats. And then she'll break the big one. That's the only way. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. Nice confidence. That'll help a little bit. What does that stack up our morale to, though? That would be an interesting sight. Never expected trees to be so darn fast on the overmap. But unfortunately, they are, so you've got to be very careful. Uh, we're sitting at 283 resolve. Woo, that's a bit of effort right there. Oh, he's wavering. Didn't know trees could get scared, but you know. Here we are, fighting trees in the middle of nowhere. And slowly winning. The rage is making a difference. And we're killing a lot of the saplings which are spawning from doing damage to the shrats. Especially the green one. But it's not getting lonely. There's only just the three big boys. 
Ah, here comes another small one. Uh, we're breaking past these shields slowly but surely. And then I just want to go into the 1v1 on this guy. Because it'd be a waste to try and kill these guys individually when I'm actually doing half decent damage to the basic shrats past their shields. Nice. So yeah, if you guys are wondering, this was not the fight I had planned. <laughs> but getting ambushed in the middle of nowhere does sort of put a skew on the plans. Of all things, it had to be trees. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Trees. Why did it have to be trees? And no loot from the Shrat? Of course, insult to injury. Okay, there's loot from that one, at least. Uh, and now we start going for the 1v1 strats. Are you, is your little... He's coming in? Okay. I'll do this. And accidentally make another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I shouldn't have them roll more 5%. Wait, the green one spawned a normal one? Oh, I hate that. Okay, now it's just mano on mano. And of course it gets the 5%. Now let's break that shield. Mm-hmm, down it goes. Fudge, that's starting to hurt. That really starting to hurt. And we're only doing 13 damage to its poor shield. And then we break it. Okay, that's big. Uh, I'll switch back to doing damage. Don't you regenerate your shield. Yes, we actually chunked it. Surround me, I don't care. Oh, we only hit once. Can I go for a return favor? Is he immune to stuns? Yeah, I think he is. Is his little friends immune? Our morale gets checked. Oh, of course it does. Nice double spin, but there's so many friends being spawned in. The shield's not repaired. Good. And we outspeed him. Even better. That's enough for the uprooting. Good. The damage getting chunked. He is fatigued to hell. Look at that. A tree is out of fatigue. I never thought trees got tired, but there you have it. Maybe that's why he can't regen his shield, because he's so exhausted. Let's do this. You're going down soon, buddy. You're already breaking. One more morale check in your hours. But he's almost dead, too. But it depends on when he wants to fix his shield. And for the moment, doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon, which is very beneficial to us. Because uh, if they regenerate the shield, you have to go through the whole process of breaking it again, which is so annoying. And he's fleeing! Let's go! Uh, he dies and drops just basic resin. Ah, No good drops, sadly. But we clean up all the baby saplings, and the fight's over. A little bit more dangerous than I was expecting, as usual. Uh, some of those damages when we're at 300 body armor pierced our armor. So yeah, Shrat's are very good at piercing armor, which is annoying. Because you can't tank them forever. Uh, we do get a level up from that great amount of XP and 10,000 damage done. Uh, we get an Ancient Amber, which sells just for money. Ancient Wood, which is used in some decent crafting items. And the Resin, which... Sometimes can be used in crafting, but it's not always the most useful. I think there's a couple items that you really need it for. But unfortunately, we had our plans screwed over. My stupid trees. Ah, uh, how can I do this? I'm gonna have to try and get sick again. Maybe buy some more potions. We need to have a successful run to where we're going. Please protect us while we do this, Mr. Mercenaries. I'm just going to buy all the potions in case we have to do it again. <laughs> okay, round two of collecting potions correctly. Because as you can see, all of our potions, except for the enhanced learning, is gone. Uh, did I do an iron will? I did. 
Oh, I didn't grab the night vision one. That's the one I'm missing. I was like, I know I had a spare potion. No, not the arena, not the arena. Alchemist. I'm used to the alchemist being in that spot. Mr. Hamlet, please tell me you have something in your alchemist. You have the night owl elixir, and I appreciate it. Double, triple, singular, and the night owl. Now, you might be wondering why I'm choosing Night Owl, and uh, you might figure it out when we get there, uh, but for the moment it's going to be a little bit of a surprise. Night Owl is helpful for one thing and one thing only when it comes to this build, this playthrough, and uh, I'll reveal that in a minute, but we have to get this fatigue going a little bit further, and let's hope the sickness doesn't last too long. As we will temporarily sit in our base again and camp it up. We'll be a little evil. Not like we need to be. Because uh, we get free stuff. Mercenary parties keep working at it. And let's hope we get a clean run this time. And sickness is... A short-term, one-day sickness. Oh, you gotta love to see that. That's the way to do it. Not waiting three days to fix your problems. Fix it in one day. Okay, let's slowly head back again. And let's make sure there's no trees this time. Oh, fudge, there's bigger footprints. Battle site from last time. We're going to make it further this time. Yes, please. Good. Now we just have to brave the forest. Goblin country. Yeah, we know. And apparently there's some there. But, today, for the semi-final, we shall... That's not goblins. It's freaking orcs. Um, we shall be conquering the Witch's Hut. A legendary location that some of you may be, or most of you may be aware of. Uh, it is a rather difficult fight, especially if you accidentally find early on in your campaigns. The Witch's Hut doesn't always spawn in the wilds where it's dangerous. Uh, there have been many instances where I've seen the Witch's Hut spawn close to civilization, and uh, if you're not sure what it is, and you just wander in thinking it's a fancy location that gives you free stuff, yeah, it doesn't do that, so... It's going to be a tough one, but the reason why we take Night Owl Elixir is to take night fights. Spoiler revealed, it allows us to help find good advantageous positions, hunt down enemies a little more easily, as we have a horrible, horrible sight radius, and sometimes I just really value the opportunity to see the lay of the land, see where enemies are positioned, and be able to advance to positions, uh, maybe plow through a certain enemy faster, to get to an enemy that I want to kill early on, kind of like the shamans. So, night vision, not the most valuable thing in the world, but allows us to have a four vision at night instead of like a three, two, or a one. Because, you know, we, we have bad, bad vision at night. I think it's like a three. But regardless, it helps us a little bit, even though we have four vision. Uh, anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the witch hunt fight. Uh, you pause at the forest clearing, the hut is a mere crumb. Soon it opens and an elderly woman hobbles out, waves in your direction, and only wants us to come in. Uh, why would you ever trust her to begin with? Because I know what the false king dreams of at night. Uh, now we talk with the mysterious woman. Stay here, stay on guard. Uh, what is it that you want? You haven't killed me. I am a witch, she admits. You might call them my sisters. Just as I do, and they want your blood, and they can smell it. That's why I wanted to talk. She draws a long object wrapped in tablecloth, sets it on the table, and reveals a jagged obsidian blade. Foreshadowing. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, cut yourself, get yourself into this wonderful pact of ours. And, yeah. She wants us to join the wonderful pain and suffering that she wants to bestow on everyone else. 
Uh, and now we made a covenant with her. And now everybody is really upset. And basically they turn on us. So we do their stupid ritual and then they completely turn on us. And I think it's because of our people as well turn on them. Yeah, it's just basically a whole screw this. Now, this fight is scripted. It's always the same enemies every time as far as I remember. Uh, so in the early game, you'll get screwed completely because you're not prepared. You just aren't. Late game, it's not as bad, but it's still pretty rough. Uh, so incoming in the blue corner or whatever corner it is will be some Hexen, a few spiders, a single swamp and a single normal unhold. Many normal direwolves, so they don't think they're frenzied, which is not too bad to deal with. Though in all honesty, they should be. Um, and then a few knocks. So it's a very, very spread out fight in terms of enemy variety. Uh, but let's see how our solo crusader deals with it. Now the reason why I wanted to take this fight is because it's a fight we could actually possibly beat. Because we are immune to charms, as you remember. And yes, as I remember correctly, these are frenzied direwolves. So the scary kind. Luckily, though, we are ready for them. Now, with our enhanced stamina, as you can see, fatigue is not as much of an issue for us. So we can go return favor and single attack, which is probably my best strat. Return favor and AoE attack. Oh, because it's our first turn in the combat. Why don't I just do both? Da -da 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 -da. Gotta do both. Incoming charms, which will never hurt. But I do believe it is three Hexen in this fight from memory. Yep. Three Hexen, incoming stuns. Nice. Oh, it's four. I was sure it was three. Fair enough. We shall deal with them in suit. Uh, the big bad unholds are going to be a little bit of an issue, but we can return favor and single target this guy. And get confident. Beautiful. Exactly what I was looking for. Um, the spiders will be defending the Hexen for the moment. Unholds will do their usual. Ah, oh, and here come the spiders now. Mm-hmm. At a glance, this doesn't seem too rough. But I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, I think it's worth it. No, oh, I didn't get a double swing. Dang it, maybe I should have just gone for my slow strats. There's still two stuns, but then there's two attacking us. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does that ruin me too much? It probably does, in all honesty. Spiders, when we're surrounded, have decided to go defend their hexes once again. No issues there, but we're down to 53 and 64%. Let's keep it going. Now, the only enemy I'm slightly worried about um, is the Swamp Unhold because of his healing capability. So I'm going to try and kill everyone before I kill the Swamp Unhold, unless I get some lucky injuries or something on him. That was a lovely hit. A couple extra stuns because of our wonderful Thresh. But no kills. We're getting great injuries. Look at that. Concussion, broken leg, broken ribs, broken leg, fractured hand, fractured elbow, broken leg. We're doing a lot of broken legs at the moment. But regardless of that, we are steaming through this fight. I was expecting a little bit more of a challenge for a late game fight. But this is not... This is a legendary location. But I wouldn't classify it as the hardest legendary location in the game. It's only a lot harder when you have a full party and the Hexus charm like your bros constantly. Then I would say, yeah, this is a very tough fight. Because four charms a turn... Whilst you're dealing with Frenzy, Direwolves, Nox, Unholds, why'd you have to go tier 3, buddy? 
Fair enough. You do you. 56, 36. Let's go for the usual. Nice. But yeah. This is a hard fight, just not seemingly as hard for us at the moment. But no complaints here. Ah, oh, yes. Keep going for corpses, buddy. And, of course, the green guy comes in a bit early. Not really what I was hoping for. But the double swing, let's go. And the double fearsome proc? Wait a minute, is this the hardest guy going to be the easiest guy? If I get one more fearsome proc on him, Hexen don't have a way of fixing that. That could be big. We may have just solved our problem. Spiders are going back to defend the Hexen, of course. Uh, the Unhold's probably going to charge us. If he knocks us back, it's going to be annoying, but I think because we got these guys next to us, we shouldn't be knocked back. Um, the only problem is... Yeah, the Overwhelm has screwed us. Ah, I tried. Getting a bit of pattern recognition on the big guy might prove to be beneficial. Now, as you're noticing, the return favor only works against people who aren't immune, so as usual, unholds will not be stunned. Uh, they might be able to get staggered, but it doesn't seem like it's proccing for that reason either. Even though, technically, you should be able to stagger an unhold. Which is probably an oversight on how return favor works, to be honest. Regardless, uh, no complaints because we're cleaning this up so nicely. And then all that's after this is just spiders and hexes. The spiders won't engage just yet because they're just too worried about us taking over those hexes. Nice, good dodges. Our armor is actually insanely good at the moment. We are perfectly built for this fight, I must say. In comparison to many other fights in the game, there's not many legendary locations that we are perfectly built for. Which is why I want to do this one as the semi-final, just to like, test the metal. See how we're doing against fights that are in our favor. Um, and, you know what? Screw it. I think we can actually beat the Unhold. He's gonna heal a lot, though. Yeah, holy crap, he healed almost all that back. But if I can get one more Fearsome proc, we win. There's another Direwolf protecting the Hexes. I just saw that on the turn order. Yep, he's still there. Uh, when it comes to Hexes, their defenders are usually very resolute. And that's a good kill. Didn't change his opinions. But, yeah, so things love to defend Hexes a lot. Dire wolves and spiders will guard them for almost the entire battle. Which you can use to your advantage sometimes, but it's also, if you're trying to rush hexes, it's not always the best thing to have to deal with a bunch of defenders. What? Did you just see that? No way! Welcome to the max roll with Head Smasher's 15% damage increase. And the 20% for injuries. We just chunked 250 damage into this Unhold's head. And gave him a concussion. Whoo! He then heals up 150, but still... Flails for the win. So much damage. Another max roll of that and we can almost win this thing. Come on, what do we got? No, that was a bit of a low roll. Ah, we need more injuries. And the reason why I was contemplating, as you heard before, the uh, poison was for the unholds. But as you guys know, the swamp unhold is not immune to poison, but does the poison doesn't stop his regeneration, which is the main problem. Now... 
That is what I wanted to see. Sure, the long list of the scrolling text that takes forever to fill the screen <laughs> is a wondrous sight to see, but the white flag is the way to go. Free damage on the way out, buddy. And he is now dead. Let's go. How many injuries does he have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Damn. That's a ten injury stacked unhold. An unhold of all things. Oh, I love this crusader. I love this crusader too much. And the spiders are fleeing. <laughs> so they should be. Once he's down, the fight's over, basically. And the fight is now over. Let's go. Yeah, the net is going to be a slight issue, but as long as they don't get any lucky hits, we should be fine. Well, there's a lucky hit. Uh, overwhelm. Ooh, I didn't think about that for the spiders. Because, yes, late game spiders have overwhelm. But it's only two stacks. Four plus six. That works. Hex is a nimble, so they take a little while to go down. But regardless, this should not be an issue. Yep, you're not attacking. Good. Three stacks of overwhelm should be able to burn through this dire wolf. 95%. Easy. And four hexes, which are insanely dangerous, have now been reduced to just blowing kisses to the wind. Because we are not changing to their side. The Resolute Crusader is the way to go. Keep trying, ladies. We're called a Lone Crusader for a reason. Three to go. And that will soon be Mrs. Concussion. Two to go. They're actually dropping a little bit of loot. That's nice to see. It is rare to get good loot with um, some of these guys. Ah, the armor gets in the way. Nice. And it was then a 1v1. Even more loot. Let's go. Might eventually be able to craft something with that, but we'll have to see how it happens. And loot on the last one. 6,900, very nice XP drop, 6,000 damage, and 19 kills. And that is a legendary location complete. Definitely an easier sweep than some of the other fights we've been having, but being built for the occasion is definitely valuable indeed. A uh, little bit of mysterious herbs and some witch's hair. Not much else. The jade brooches are things you sell. So, yeah. Congratulations, and as you can see, something's rolled up on the table. Hmm. Who are you? You're an old hag, everything else is hearsay. Ah, yes, so the one hag, the, I think the main hag's the one that stays negotiable, whilst the other hags were a bunch of jerks. How do you know who I am? You don't even know my name. But the blood of the ancients resides within me. Interesting. The whole world can smell it. Oh, maybe that's where we're getting attacked by everything. Who were the ancients? They were men before our time. And spend dying days with the... Ah, uh, basically the, uh, the skeletons, because they're from the old empire. There's a bit of lore to this game, which is actually pretty cool if you read it all. I just haven't had... The ability to read it all. <laughs> but there's some pretty cool stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, what's Dav cool? As if we don't know. 
Uh, you've heard nothing about it. A god, you say? Never spoken to me. Which means Davkul doesn't communicate with hexes. With the green skins human? You wish. Nope. They're not humans. And then why do you call me a false king? Uh, no remember. She was probably possessed when she said it or something, or like a dream. Uh, what do I dream of? Go to the nobleman, they pay us gold. Just play like a sellsword, pretty much. Who am I? You stand up yelling the woman for answers, because she's kind of like a seer. Uh, she slaps you in the face. <laughs> Which is just hilarious. Grabs a handkerchief, throws it off, revealing the dagger between. No more questions. There's only so much I know. She's not God. She's not Dav Cool. She doesn't know everything. Uh, we made a deal. This is the end of it because we did the pact. She didn't screw us over. Her friends did. Um, but she honors the pact and we gain the Obsidian Dagger. The first legendary weapon of the series. Uh, and yeah. Congratulations. Uh, we could kill her. But we're not. We're nice. She did a lot for us. And it's time to go. Now, as a solo crusader, dagger builds are foreign. Definitely not something we would be doing. But the obsidian dagger itself is a very cool weapon. Uh, it glows blue, which is different to when you see famed items that glow red. Uh, as famed legendary items have a different glow and art texture around them. The Obsidian Dagger is what the Hermit gave you, the Hermit Witch, the one that is the most negotiable out of them all. Uh, it gives you the Dagger, which is an upgrade to the Rondel Daggers ever so slightly. And the main catch to this amazing weapon, which is a really cool sell point, is that any human you kill with it summons as a zombie for the fight and fights on your side. Not just a normal zombie, a zombie that's yours, not to control but it also doesn't survive to the end of combat and stay in your party. But it only lasts for that one uh, battle. It only works against humanoids, uh, specifically humans. So goblins it doesn't work against, orcs it doesn't work against, and all sorts of monsters. So it's a very situational weapon. I don't resonate very strongly with the Obsidian Dagger. I don't think it's that amazing. Sure, it's more of a gimmicky fun weapon, so yes, there's ways to have fun with it. Uh, but if you're trying to go, like, full-on dagger builds and, you know, try and make the best strats, uh, don't waste your time in the witch's huts, because this thing is not really worth the time and effort. Just go get yourself a rondel dagger or a famed version of one of those, or a redback dagger, which is way the best version in the game of a dagger. Uh, regardless, that is the fight, and man, we did not take much losses in that. And I guess the potions did help, not like we needed it. Oh, did I forget to eat a mushroom? Ha! I forgot to eat a mushroom for that fight. So that 250 head damage, I don't even think it was buffed. I had four mushrooms, used one for the strats, didn't even use one in that fight, so that was a blunder on my side. We weren't even in peak performance. Ha 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 Regardless... That was a fun fight, even if it was a bit of a pushover. Uh, let's start heading back to civilization. Let's go back home to where we know and love. Uh, let's stay away from some of these scarier locations. Orc hunters are scared of us? Ah, that's a first. The mercenaries are defending the base nicely, even at tier 1. Still making a bit of survival efforts, indeed. Potion-wise, what are we missing? Not much, actually. We should be fine. Everything should go according to plan for the next fight of the finale. But other than that, let's head home. Check up on the Weaponsmith as per usual. There is nothing in there, which is very sad. And the Armorsmith has a 7 for 158. Not better than our usual, and it's kind of okay in general, but I still think there are better versions than that. 
Uh, and pretty much garbage for the rest of it. Sad, sad times. Let's add this wonderful item into our trophy room. As we have no use for it. <laughs> and we can consider getting some crafting. Uh, when it comes to witches stuff, would I have enough? That's the big question. Uh, let's put everything back in the inventory and quickly check what's available to craft. Grab two of everything. Okay. We may just have enough to craft something cool. Bone plating has been always available for us. Lindworm cloak, yep. Protective runes and sigils is nice, but remember, this is kind of the same thing as the necklace that is useless as hell, so these are kind of useless as hell. So getting the witch's hair is nice if you are always fighting priests. I think that's it. It's like just the priests horrify. Um, Alf trophy necklace is something we could have crafted a while ago for experience gain. Not something we desperately need, because it's only 5%. We can make our own cat's potion now, which is interesting. It's not a good potion for us. Uh, we get happy powder, but I don't see us needing that. Uh, some campaigns do definitely benefit from uh, happy powder. Flash pot, no. Definitely a lot of potions available with the witch's items and the adrenaline glands. But sadly, that seems to be the extent of our crafting ability. The Globule is good for the light padding replacement, which reduces armor penalties to your fatigue, which allows you to be a bit more light on your feet when it comes to fatigue use. Uh, we need an extra Gossamer for that. Noble Cloak. I'm thinking of the Hexen Cloak, but I don't think we have enough for it. Serpent Skin Mantle. We're missing a Knock Horn. Unhold Cloak. No. Warlock Cloak. We're not even close. Warlock Hood, we're pretty close, actually. We would just need some human bones, a simple hood, and either a tailor or a seamstress, so we're not far off of that. Though I think the bones are almost impossible to get. Unless you're in the uh, Warlock Origin. Uh, the shields, there we are. The Kraken Shield uses the glowing resin. So there are a few interesting items that need the resin. Uh, including the Greenwood Shield, so it's not a bad drop to grab. And it's the Greenwood Shield that's amazing for defense. It's 43 melee defense with 120 durability. This is a shield I absolutely love. Uh, and what's the other one that I do enjoy using? It should be the Living Tree Shield. Yep. Which we almost have enough to make. We just need a Lumberjack, which we will unfortunately never get. But this shield, although it has horrible durability... I love it for the fact that it heals itself every turn. So as long as you have someone a shield expert and nobody one-shots or two-shots this shield and you don't get surrounded by axes, this shield will never die. Um, this is the best dagger in the game, which is a lot better than the obsidian dagger, as you can see. Uh, but other than that... Ah, uh, we're the Demon Bansy Trophy. We can't make another one because the Anchi Essence... Can't make the Demon Elf. Uh, Hexen Trophy, we're missing the Apple. That's the thing we were missing, which is not a big trophy, but it has the plus six there if you need it. And other than that, that's pretty much it. A lot of few other potions. It's mainly the potions that need a lot of things from the Hexen Trophies and all that. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. We did have a wonderful time doing a few cleaning house quests and fights. Uh, mainly just to enjoy that arena as well for free money. Uh, very happy with the update to the mod as it is constantly being fixed, and I really appreciate that. But, yeah, there goes the Witch's Hut. One-time event, one-time fancy legendary item. And tune in for next episode, the finale, where we get to fight something maybe a little bit harder. One of my most hearted rated fights in the game. But you'll have to wait and see for next episode to see what we get into. But I hope you enjoyed, as usual, and we'll catch you in the next one. See yous.